Yo, what is going on guys? Jack here, and welcome to episode 65 of our Tracksuit to the Top series here with Lewis FC in the Premier League. Hopefully you guys are good. Today I have for you guys a live comment in the Capital One Cup quarterfinal against Newcastle, but before that we've got to review what's been going on at the club since the last episode, which of course was a double header live comment which you should definitely go and check out. And um, it was a fantastic win that we got in the Capital One Cup fourth round, knocking out Manchester City 2-1. Anyway, since then, uh, things haven't been great. We started off with a fantastic start. We won 3-0 against Norwich, but Matthew Lewis got injured. And um, as you can see, he's been out with a torn calf muscle, and he's still out for six weeks to two months. He's basically had three to four months out of the game, and that's hurt him. His physicals have declined. Um... In some ways, that might actually be a benefit, and that might sound like a really odd thing to say. But um, th the physical stats actually take up a lot of a player's current ability. And for a player like Matthew Lewis, like whilst he has incredible pace, I almost would rather that he had better finishing and technicals and had mediocre pace. When I say mediocre pace, obviously this isn't going to drop that much more, but... Basically, in some of these attributes dropping, I'm hoping that when he's fully fit, we might see some of his technicals improve even further. But, um, yeah, not ideal. 3-0 win, but that kind of injury hit us hard. The next game was a 2-0 defeat uh, away against Nottingham Forest. They were the better team. They played a lot better. It was pretty disappointing. The next game, we got another win um, against Charlton. However, this is only the second win we got in our last seven games. Uh, Sonogo getting the Man of the Match award, scoring a free kick. He's improved a lot as a player. You can see a lot of his um, attributes have improved. And uh, he's looking like an absolutely incredible player for us. And he's not been in formidable form of late, but he's been playing fairly well. So anyway, that was a good win against Charlton. One of my big worries with us losing Matthew Lewis was the fact we might not get goals. The real issue's actually been that we've just not defended very well. Um, we, we've we been getting goals. You can see here we relied on two uh, own goals by Man City to see us lose 4-2. That result kind of flattered us a little bit. Uh, the next result was a 4-1 defeat against Liverpool. Again, goals a bit of an issue, but Ihi Nacho, good to see him get back on the score sheet. Of course, have been away on an international duty for a month. Um, certainly not in the form he was in last year. Obviously, last year, 22 goals in 37 games. This season, 4 goals in 10. Hopefully, he can start to pick things up. But Origi grabbing 4 here for Liverpool. And he's been performing really well for them. You can see he's got 11 in 14 for them this year. Um, of which 4 came against us. Anyway, the next game, we conceded 4 for the 4th? Four, four, no, we conceded 4 goals for the 3rd game in a row, uh, but this time we did get a point, a away draw against Arsenal, a fantastic result really, uh, good to see Alex Samuel get some goals, with Matthew Lewis being injured, Samuel coming into the first team a little bit, and he got a hat-trick uh, on off the bench, which saw us secure a good point. So that was pretty pleasing. And then the last result of this little run of fixtures was a 1-1 draw against Hull in a game that we did absolutely dominate. However, we lacked that killer instinct and in the end Hull grabbed a penalty, scored it and um, we lived to regret the fact we didn't take the chances that came our way. So all in all, things looking pretty positive. Looking at the players here, uh, goal scorers, Matthew Lewis had 10 in 12 but now he's injured. We're looking for those goals to come from elsewhere, but we don't have someone else in good goal scoring form, which is a slight worry. On the assist front, uh, Juan Carlos Leon's performed very well. The centre mid, who of course joined us this year for £8 million, he's doing a good job. Uh, Beto's done okay on loan from Real Madrid. He's not scored so many, but he's got a few assists. Sonogo contributed with four assists, and uh, Batigelli, the um, Argentine, as well, getting a few assists. But no one really standing out for us this year. However, uh, things could be worse, I guess, if we just look at where we actually lie in the league. We're currently 11th. Um, it's not terrible. It's not fantastic. Obviously, today our attentions go towards the Capital One Cup quarterfinal. Um, looking at the draw, you can see, obviously, we play Newcastle, Tottenham play Chelsea, Everton play Manchester United, and Bournemouth play Southampton. So the draw's actually been quite kind to us there. 
But anyway, uh, let's see how we get on in today's game. It's not going to be easy. I'm sticking with our new league kind of implemented 4-3-1-2 formation. It's been working very well, particularly with a few more players getting fit for us and actually being capable of playing, obviously, where there's not been too many occasions this year where we've had Sonogo, Ihi, Nacho, Batagelli, Juan Carlos Leon kind of all in the team together just because the injuries they've had and also the international duty kind of getting in the way a little bit. But a big game hopefully today. If we could get back to winning ways, that would be fantastic. We've struggled a little bit of late. We are at home, which probably gives us an advantage. And of course, we did beat Manchester City uh, in this competition previously. So I kind of feel like we have a point to prove here. We have um, an opportunity, certainly, if we could win this, to qualify for the Europa League. But it's not going to be easy. As Sonogo whips in the ball and Shea Yojo scores after four minutes and he is absolutely loving it so that's a good start as i mentioned and as i was mentioning this is an opportunity to qualify for europe winning in this competition i'm taking it very seriously at the moment in the league we're only 11th you know realistically we're not going to qualify for europe through league positions we look fairly clear of relegation which of course is pleasing because this still is our only a, kind of our second year in the Premier League and we are still establishing, uh, establishing ourselves as a Premier League squad um, but yeah all in all I'm pretty happy with what we've done as Beto has a chance he was offside but he did it at the crossbar um, and obviously because this season we don't have too much to play for really I'm just looking for us to get a mid-table finish um, cup competitions are going to be a focus for us because they give us a chance to broaden our horizons and add some silverware. Of course, the last piece of silverware the club got being the um, Johnson's Paint Trophy. That's the last time and the only time, in fact, during this save that we've actually won domestic silverware. But we can't get too carried away yet. There's still plenty of matches left to be played. And here in the quarter final, it's still only 1 0. But Sonogo on the attack here, maraudering down the left hand side, whips in the ball to Batagelli, and he hits it. The Argentine smashes it into the roof of the net. He makes it 2-0. A great goal for him there. And we look not home and dry, but we look very, very good right now. Snogo with an intelligent pullback and Batagelli just rifles it in from the edge of the area. Newcastle looking a little bit slow. Uh, of course, with Matthew Lewis being injured, he's not been playing for us lately. But it's worth noting that he wouldn't have been able to play this game anyway because, of course, he is still on loan from Newcastle, who have just scored through Julian Green, the international, of course, of the US men's national team. Interesting to see him playing in England. Um, I still can't get over how small our ground is. <laughs> Obviously, we are building a 15,000-seater stadium. It's going to be built and finished. Touch wood if everything goes to, on schedule at the end of the year. Sometimes FM likes to delay stadiums being built and make them overrun because that's realistic. Stadiums are never built on time. Um so yeah, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to move in at the end of the year. And obviously 15,000 seats is good, but I'm having a sneaking suspicion, I guess, that that's probably going to need to be expanded further um, for us. But anyway, Newcastle on the attack. We need to defend well. Batagelli with a good interception. Can we break now? So no go. Running ahead, there's an option in the box. Ihi Nacho's there, that unselfish play by Sonogo, playing this newly kind of formed Trek Watista role. Gets his second assist, I do believe, of the game. And we restore our two-goal deficit, making it 3-1. Looking at the stats, we've had more of the ball, we've had more shots, we've created more clear-cut chances, and we are showing that on the scoreline right now. We are taking advantage of the chances that come our way. Maybe we have another chance here as Ihi Nacho has the ball. Batagelli out wide. Options in the middle. Whips it in. Denzel effort. And that was blocked. That was a clear cut chance. And that was perhaps an opportunity just to put this game not necessarily beyond doubt. But really give us enough breathing room to the stage where I can just relax a little bit. Because two goals. Yes it's comfortable. But there's plenty of time left in this game for Newcastle to get back into it. And Sonogo takes a knock. Uh, despite the fact we're winning, um, and perhaps I'd rather keep Sonogo on, I'm just going to be smart here. We have a few injuries to contend with in our first team. Joe Allen's out with a broken ankle as well as Matthew Lewis, so we're just going to sub off Sonogo. Rolando, Aarons or Aarons, depending on how you want to say it, is available for us. I've been having uh, a few people tell me it's Rolando Aarons. Now, it, it may well be Rolando Aarons, and I checked YouTube and it probably is Rolando Aarons. But because he plays for Jamaica, I just imagine saying his name with a really thick kind of Caribbean accent. So it's kind of 
Aaron. Uh, that isn't Caribbean. I can't do accents. The point I'm making is that Aaron sounds a lot better than Aaron's in my head. Imagining a Jamaican man saying it with a really thick Caribbean accent. I can't believe I just tried to do an accent. If, if you've ever watched any of my live streams on Twitch, you'll know the accents. Just I can't do accents. It just sounds like a slightly more or less constipated version of my own voice. But we have scored. Who was it who scored while I was rambling like a madman? It was Ihi Nacho with another goal for him. That's his second of the game. Oh, wow. Iosi Perez threw on goal. Is it Kuaku in goal for us? No, it's not. It's Mullen. Is Kuaku injured? He must be. Yeah, he is. He's got a sports hernia, I think. So Mullen's been back in the team. Um... But for one at the break, please with how things are going. Obviously, as I mentioned um, previously... Oh, Snago did get three assists in the end, by the way. Um, I can't remember what I was saying now. I was going to say something of real insight. That's not true. It probably wasn't, but I can't think what it would have been. I cannot think. It's, it's escaped me. Anyway, we're on the attack. Let's just focus on the here and now. Batagelli, Ihi Nacho, options in the middle. Can he whip it in? He can. Aaron's is there. Batagelli. Ojo. Juan Colas, Leon. Aaron's. Ihi Nacho makes it five. Is that his hat trick? It is his hat trick. A huge game for him. A massive performance. He's been struggling for goals in the league, but against Premier League opposition here in the Cup, he's showing his form and maybe rekindling his goal-scoring repertoire and kind of uh, pedigree that he's shown over the last few years. He's had a slow start to the season, but he's come up big here for us in a very big game. It looks like he may well be launching us in to the semi-finals of the Capital One Cup, and what a cup run this has been so far, you know. We've had a few nicer draws against the likes of Cambridge and MK Dons, but beating Newcastle in this kind of manner, and obviously last episode beating Manchester City, we're, we're making... Uh, a name for ourselves, I guess. We're beating some big teams, you know, other Premier League teams who are perhaps expected to go a little bit further than we are in this competition, although we have got to defend here. That's nicely dealt with. 5-1 is comfortable, though. I'm not worried about conceding and losing this game from some kind of crazy second-half comeback, although maybe I should be. Maybe I'm being a bit naive here as... We do deal with it quite well there. Leon will get the ball away and they're making some tactical changes. Do I want to make any changes? I guess I could bring on some fit legs, but I don't really want to. Um, no, no, not making any tactical changes. Going to just go with the flow at this point. See how we get on. Um, are you on the attack? Can we put in a tackle? I'm surprised that Iosi Perez is still in the Newcastle side. Like, they've stuck with him for so long. Usually he either gets snapped up by a bigger team or just doesn't improve enough to feature for Newcastle. It's kind of odd that he's forced out Matthew Lewis to the stage where he's on loan us. But I guess with finishing like that, you can't really complain. He makes it 5-2. Mullen beaten at his near post. The commentator picks up on saying he might have been disappointed. That is a real issue with Mullen. Craig Mullen, he probably wasn't good for us when we were in League One. He's certainly not good enough for us in the Premier League, but he's kind of like... I don't know. I'm trying to think of some kind of way of phrasing who he is. He's, he's like... The shitty piece of furniture in your house. I don't know if when you were growing up, maybe your parents had some furniture that they just wouldn't throw out and it was tatty old crap, but it had some kind of sentimental attachment reasoning for it being there. Maybe it was never even used as a piece of furniture. Craig Mullen's like that. He's like a table in the corner of the living room that no one really knows why you've got this scaffy old table that's really not up to standards, but you'll use it every now and again and that's why it's there. That's what he is. Anyway, um, a good win. So no go with three assists. Uh, before being subbed off in the 40th minute. Uh, Kelechi in Nacho with a hat-trick too, which is pretty good news for us. And all in all, uh, pretty impressive stuff. A great win, and that will see us going to the semi-final. Looking at it, Bournemouth going through, uh, Manchester United going through, and Tottenham going through. So if we could get Bournemouth, that would be nice. So no go out for three weeks. Well, I'm glad we took him off when we did rather than forced him to play because he could have been out for a lot longer, but that does not annoy me any less. That's a trend of our season this year. Injuries just all the time. Anyway, before we wrap up this episode, we will just check uh, in and watch the draw here. So draw all teams. we got Manchester United at home. Well, if you're going to win the Cup, you've got to be big, big, 
beat the big teams at some point. Um, I believe this will be over two legs, so uh, I guess I'll join you guys for the... Well, actually looking at it, both legs are back-to-back. -back. Excellent. Well, I'll see you guys next episode for that game. Uh, against Manchester United, I guess, as we will be taking part in the Capital One Cup semi-final. And I kind of feel like the Capital One Cup has really given this season some purpose. So hopefully you guys will tune in then to show the team some support. And maybe, just maybe, see us make our way to a domestic cup final at Wembley.